Hello everyone. Welcome back to my annual share session. Learn with me. Today we are going to continue on the same topic, cloud platform integration. Uh, we will see uh, today. We will see how we can call an REST API from a CPI using the uh, Groovy script. In the previous class, previous video, I, I explained the same topic. How we are going to call the REST API from CPI using a a request reply palette not not by the Groovy script request reply palette that will pass through a cloud connector so when you are having a api a rest api which is inside the sap system of on premises it's always recommended to go via the cloud connector because that is a secured way of consuming the api but today i am going to take an experiment uh, which is not recommended but just for our understanding purpose i'm going to try out consuming the same rest api which is inside my sap system of on premises uh, using a groovy script okay so just for review back the last one we did we had the for this method uh, we were having sap uh, we were having our credentials and using the iflow and the request reply that will pass through the cloud connector and access my the rest api but this is the recommended way but my what i'm going to do is now instead of that one i'm going to create a same iflow but instead of a request reply i'm using a groovy script which will directly call this api uh, not via the cloud connector by using a groovy script we remember this is just a experiment purpose which is not recommended unless until you have any other option uh, you can go with this for this a lot of uh, firewall settings are required so which is not recommended in reality uh, but <coughs> just to understand how we can achieve the consumption of api via groovy script just for the understanding purpose i am creating this video okay Okay, now we will go to the uh, iFlow directly and I will explain you what are the steps I did it to consume this API via Groovy script. Okay, now I am already created one iFlow. Uh, I will explain it one by one how I am going to achieve the consumption of API using Groovy script. Okay, I will go to my iFlow. Uh, this is my iFlow I created. Uh, a sender. A sender is directed by connected to the endpoint via HTTPS. My endpoint name is my endpoint is rest two a. This we will explain. This we will execute in the postman. Okay. So it, it has one content modifier and it, it has one uh, Groovy script which which we are we are going to focus. And I created one exception uh, sub process. If at all any exception, I am going to handle it via exception. And the the exception, I am going to display the error message. In the exception content modifier, in the message body, I created the dollar exception message. Okay, okay. This is the layout of my iFlow. Now let us see one by one. Why I use the content modifier? Content modifier, I am going to fetch my uh, URL and I'm going to fetch my user ID and password because that is the user ID and password I needed to connect it to my API that was a, because the authentication was a basic type okay let us go to content motivator in the property section I created three variables okay one is called password one is called user ID and one is my, my API so that is the sources of uh, global variable okay you can you can fetch the variables from your monitoring section which i already in the monitoring section i already created these variables under the manage store section in the variable section i created these variables my api with visibility of a global password is also visibility of global and user is also visibility called global global okay so uh, just to understand how you can create uh, variables uh, there is another video i already created you can refer to that through which you can maintain your variables 
uh, of a visibility either it is a local local means specific to the integration flow only if it is global that means these variables can be accessed by any of the i flow inside your tenant okay so using that uh, let me edit it and i'll show you using that i created a variable and i'll say source type is a global variable there are so many options are there i use the global variable when you say global variable it will always refer to the reflection here in that i created my variables in the header properties okay so i will have a message my url my user id and password will be available in my content modifier okay now we will come to the groovy script this is the groovy script which i am going to right which will consume my api okay let me open my flow script now i will explain one by one so this you will be knowing these are all the important uh, packages which we need to import it in the groovy script to handle the message you have in this one to once the response is get back from the api and the, those json file i have to manage so i use this slurper then these three are required for the uh, my http connections no, not three are not all the four okay http connection the url and uh, for authentication purpose uh, i had to convert my user and password to the base 64 so i use this class and the standard character set okay so so as usual uh, this is a template which is start the grow script first i'm going to get the variables okay so i define a headers which will take from message dot get headers from the get headers what all the properties i defined in my content modifier will be accessible so i am getting that then i use my url equal to from this headers from this headers i'll get the variable my api user id and password so that will be stored in these local variables okay now next step is i create another set of variables same thing api url username and password and i assign back whatever they read now from the properties next step is next step is you have to create your authentication of a, ba of a basic type okay so this is the syntax so i created one variable of auth which will have my use whatever the name i fed it username and uh, password i read it that will be created then this will be converted as a base 64 authentication type and then i created one header variable called auth header which is of type basic and the encoded user id password so this I, I will be sent along with the request. So auth header is created. Now you create a URL object, new URL. Then I create a connection. It will open a connection. From the connection, I am going to set the my method. It is of a type get method. So I am going to set the connection dot get method. And uh, this is option. If you can set the uh, timeout, you can set the timeout. All all these uh, connection properties are normal. Uh, it will be, we will be using for any kind of uh, HTTP request. We are going to do it. So when the connection a connection object object is created, we will set all the properties of the connection like what is my method, what is my timeout, and what is my authentication, etc. Right. So this is my authentication property which I already created auth header I am passing it. After that uh, this is optional because I am not going to send any body in this request uh, but just for a template purpose I created it. After that you are going to use the try catch. So this try and catch will do like this try. Uh, it will connection get response code so once this is executed it, you are directly sending a request to the server you will get a response code okay now it is checking response code is okay or not that means 200 if it is set 200 
then from this connection I will get the input stream what are the response it will it will be read and store it in the object called input stream and I will convert in convert this input stream object to a text and store it in a response variable okay if we, the, the HTTP OK is not 200, then you will get the failure, failure message. We are storing it as a response failure message with the dollar response code. Dollar response code will return you back the, uh, the return code, whether it is a 200 or 400, whatever the case. After that, I am going to handle that response to a JSON. So create a one dummy variable, JSON response. Then if the response is not null, that means this is yeah, obviously this will not be not this will not be not null. Uh, so not null. Then I'm using this slurper object and convert this response to the JSON response. Okay. After that, this JSON response I'm putting back in the message body. Message dot message body. That's it. If there are any exception, then the exception will be captured in the uh, exception block. Okay, that's it. So finally, in the message will be returned back. That's all. So, so here uh, we are directly passing the URL and the user ID password. The user ID password is converted as a authentication type basic, and that you are passing it as a property of your connection parameter. And sending the request. Okay. Okay. Now we will. What we'll do is we will execute this in a postman. And I will deploy it. I will deploy. I will execute in a postman. And see how it works. Okay. Okay. Now uh, it is inside my postman. So this is my URL, rest to a. I am going to send it. So no body is required. Uh, so it has to return me back my JSON file. Okay, let us execute it now. Good. And now it is returned me 200. Okay. So it has returned me my JSON file. Okay, which is same one which we discussed in the last video, uh, which we were accessing the same API via the cloud connector. But as I, as I, I am repeatedly telling you, this connecting an API directly from the Groovy script, uh, which is in on premises, uh, generally is not recommended, which it has to go via the cloud connector only, because you will you have a secured way of approaching the API. Okay, but in this case, uh, just for experiment purpose, we can say that we can achieve the same thing via Groovy script also. Okay, we can achieve the same thing via the Groovy script also. That's for experimentation purpose only. I created this video so that you can use this uh, template of the Groovy script to to connect to any API in future if you want, which is not required for the uh, cloud connector. Okay. Okay. Hope uh, this session is helpful to you. Uh, so, using a Groovy script, uh, how how we can consume an HTTP REST API, we, we saw th in this video. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any uh, concerns, please comment in the comment section. I will be very happy to reply you back. Okay. You can use this Groovy script as a template to consume any API and, uh, if you want to do it from a Groovy script. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching.